Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be diving back into on-chain analysis. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the Bitcoin spent output profit ratio. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, it's time to put our, our on-chain analysis hat back on. Obviously, there's the typical disclaimers with on-chain analysis and that it does not fully capture the entire market um, because it only captures what's actually happening on-chain, as well as we do know that people could, you know, make on-chain transactions that are, are just potentially sending, you know, sending Bitcoin to themselves or, you know, transferring Bitcoin to various wallets and, and making it look like more people are accumulating than there are. But with that said, with those typical disclaimers said, I still do think there's at least something to be something to be gained by at least looking at the data. All right. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the Bitcoin spent output profit ratio and what that is. I'll just read this description here for you. This is on on my website um, into the cryptoverse.com uh, for the premium list. But the description is the, the spin output profit ratio is simply calculated by dividing the aggregate realized value of coins by the aggregate cost basis of those coins. Okay, so um, total price sold over total price paid. And if you think about it, it, it's going to oscillate around one, right? So if it's one, they're, they're basically equivalent, like the total price sold is, is the same as the total price paid. If it's above one, then people are, are, are actually realizing gains. Okay, so when we're up in this region, people are realizing gains on their Bitcoin. However, when we're below one, market participants are realizing losses. Okay, and I, I do think it's interesting because one of the things you can easily note from this chart um, is how there were a lot of profits taken during during this wave here, all right, during this this impulsive move by Bitcoin to the upside. All right, a lot of profits taken. And as you guys know, I was I was even taking profits over there um, on the way up. And months of profit taking, right? And, and mostly you could argue that a lot of the profit taking was just the people who had been buying down here, right? Buying down here, taking profits up here. And then we had the summer lull. And during the summer lull, what happened? Tons of people realize losses. Now, it's likely that the people that were realizing losses are the people that bought up here, right? Uh, up at up at 60K for the first time. They FOMO'd in to the market after it was already up 20X. And, and then they, a lot of them, probably sold. And furthermore, my, you, you know, the, the social statistics that I've, I've seen around, like, the various channels that I have would suggest that there are definitely a lot of people who joined the cryptoverse back in February, March, and April, and then they sold in the summer lull and actually haven't returned. All right, so I do think there's a lot of evidence to suggest that. I would also say that, uh, and this is one of the things we've been talking about for a while now, is that the the projects that are, you know, when we see these projects pumping, right now, I actually believe that it's mostly the same money kind of going back and forth. I don't really see a lot of new money coming in, um, at, le at least up until now. Okay, now whenever Bitcoin breaks the all-time high, that's usually when retail flocks back in. All right, so do keep that in mind. So a lot of profits taken up here. Down here, people are realizing losses. But then what's interesting is, is that during this next phase, like this, this, little, this little bounce, and then the second bounce that put us into a new all-time high, what you'll notice is that there wasn't nearly as much profit taking as there was back over here. I mean, I think it makes sense because if you think about it from a from a practical standpoint, all the people that bought over here, a lot of them would have taken profits, right? A lot of them would have taken profits up here because you're, you're, you're up significantly. And then you get this 55% drop. Well, the long-term investors, after taking profits, like the idea of buying at a discount. So, you know, if Bitcoin drops 50% or something, it's hard for them not to want to buy back into the market, right? Because it's a 50% a drop is a 50% drop, right? So then we moved back up, but I don't really see a whole lot of profits being taken at that point. Now, of course, some people did take profits 
and and that is why the the price of Bitcoin is back down to forty one thousand dollars. But it it was not nearly. I, I it looks like it was not nearly as as aggressive as it was back during the during that initial distribution phase in early twenty twenty one. All right, and part of it could be that the people that are you know that started accumulating again at twenty nine k and thirty k. A lot of those people are going to be the long-term holder type of people. Like, I, I would be hard-pressed to imagine that the people that we're buying down here are the type of people that are actually going to stick it out through thick and thin, right? Most likely, the people that are, are just kind of here for the quick buck, they're going to join up here probably at a really bad time. And then when it comes down here, they're going to sell and they're not going to come back for a while. If you are buying down here, there still is a decent chance you're, you're kind of you, you're picking up positions for the long haul. And, and not necessarily looking to make quick swing trades. Though I will say, I mean, if anyone bought at 30K and then sold at 69K, they did very well for themselves. Okay, then there's no, no arguments about that here. Um, uh, that's the truth, right? They did. So um, right now, though, you can see we're back below one. So what that means is that the people that are, um, I mean, it, it clearly says it right down, down here, right? If, if it's below one, people are realizing losses. So right now, you could easily argue that losses are being realized, and uh, we've had these phases many times before. We had it back during the summer lull. We had a little bit of it actually back during the September dip. The people that bought at like 53k probably, some of them were probably selling here, or maybe some of the people over here uh, saw this bounce and decided to get out, right? And and then they left. But we also had, you know, we also had a phase. Uh, when we went to 12K and then back to 10K, I imagine some people FOMO'd it, FOMO'd it in at 12K and then sold at a loss at 10K and then so on and so forth. So you can see sort of the, the way the market works, right? I mean, you have the long-term investors that come in and, and they, they're the ones typically buying the coins of the people that are, are trading it for a loss, okay? Like, so like for instance, down here, a lot of people were, were, trading, uh, were selling their Bitcoin for a loss but these are the investors that, that were buying down there. Those are the investors that ultimately were probably the ones selling up here. So in the short term, it was really brutal for those investors, right? Because, you know, I mean, at, at 6K, 6K was, I mean, honestly, 6K was a reasonable price to accumulate Bitcoin back in 2018. It was, an, it was a reasonable price. And I didn't have a YouTube channel back then. But if I had had a YouTube channel back then, I imagine I would have said that 6K was a reasonable price to buy Bitcoin didn't stop it from going to 3k a few months later right it didn't stop it from doing that but it also didn't stop it from going on an impulsive rally more than 2x what 6k was and it took us all the way up to fourteen thousand dollars just like four or five months later so you have to realize that even in a downtrend if you're if you're buying bitcoin in a downtrend you must realize that the downtrend could continue for a while and that you could be temporarily um, kind of in the hole in terms of maybe maybe your cost basis is higher than the current price if you just started buying Bitcoin for the first time. But it's typically those people that, that stick with it for a while that ultimately see those profits come back. Um, sometimes it takes a month or two. Sometimes it can take, you know, five months. Sometimes it can take longer, right? It can take a year. If, if, if we go through a full, uh, the, the times when we go through a full winter, it can take a couple years, or so, maybe even longer. But it is those people that, that generally do see the market um, kind of come back in their favor eventually, because the market does generally trend up with time. All right, so do keep that in mind. And this, again, it, it, this is the, the spent output profit ratio. When it's below one, people are realizing losses. When it's above one, people are realizing gains. Um, and then also, I would like to say, we, we put in this, this usage uh, note here, is that it's not meant for indicating market peaks or bottoms, like either global market cycle peaks or local peaks, local bottoms, market cycle bottoms. It just tells you whether a lot of profits or losses are being realized. All right. Are profits being realized? Are, are profits being realized? Are, lo are losses being realized? And, and that's the point of, of the chart, not to say, hey, this is the peak or this is this is the bottom. If a lot of profits are being taken in confluence with a lot of other metrics, could be some type of risk metric, could be you know, if you just think that, look, uh, the market's been up a lot recently uh, and you see a lot of people taking profits, that could be a decent, you know, area of confluence that you could look for. Um, and, and then you can you can DCA accordingly. So, for instance, when and DCA goes goes either way, right? DCA in, DCA out. So back over here during that 
early phase in 2021 doing this impulsive rally, you could easily look at this chart and say, well, look, I mean, it, it looks like a lot of people are taking profits. This is the time where I want to DCA out of the market. Okay. And then whenever it goes down in the negative area, you'd say, all right, well, this is the time I want to DCA into the market, right? When it goes like when it, when people start taking profits again, you could argue maybe it's time to take some off the table, if it if it's in confluence with some other metrics you're using, and if it you know comes down into these areas, that's typically the time to DCA. I would argue that this chart is very much useful for the long-term macro investor, not for the investor that's here to just stick around for a couple of weeks and then and then go away. We can also smooth this out a little bit by using a seven day move, moving average. You can see if you don't use a moving average, it's pretty noisy. If you go to a seven day moving average, this is what it looks like. And you can see that a lot of profits were actually realized at that first peak at, at 42K before we had that final distribution phase in early 2021 before coming back down to, to $30,000. So that's, I mean, I was, I was actually, for full disclosure, I was taking profits during that point. And it's easy to feel, feel dumb in the short term when you take profits and then it just goes up you know, another another 50% or so in a relatively short amount of time. But you just have to admit that you that the market is relatively unpredictable in the short term and there's no guarantees, okay? We easily could have come back down. But in fact, we did go back up and P, the profit taking continued until eventually the market can no longer bear it. And then the people that bought up there experienced the loss if they sold down in here. If we look at the 14 day moving average to get it smoothed out even more, everything just becomes a little bit more obvious in terms of the profit taking people selling at a loss, smaller amount of profit taking, a little bit of people, you know, a little bit of selling at a loss down here. So you should know again that while there was profit taking in this area, it was nowhere close to being the same as what we saw back over here. Okay, so, and I mean, why should it be? You have to imagine that the profits being taken in this region had to be a lot higher because you're, 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 you're essentially dealing with everyone who bought over here that wants to sell at a profit. And, and then if you come back up again, maybe maybe the people that are taking profits over here are either the short term traders or if it's someone who didn't take any profits on the first run up and now they're thinking, all right, well, now's my time to to at least take some profits. OK, if we go to the 30 day moving average on on this on this metric shows a very similar story. And then the 90 day, you can actually see it's it's actually still uh, relatively elevated because we, we've only been we, we've been dumping pretty quickly here from from 60K or so. Uh, and so it hasn't really had time to, to have like a three month moving average where it's showing people are are realizing losses. But you should know that the 90 day moving average um, earlier this year during the summer lull did get below one. So even on a three month running basis, there were losses being realized. Uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy the on-chain analysis. I'll try to keep it coming uh, off and on with, with various various metrics that we can discuss. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Again, we do have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com where you can access these charts. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.